Sure, so we may as well use a real-world de-identified case. The patient was in his mid-60s, um, was diagnosed with stage 4 adenocarcinoma of the lung. He had tissue-based testing that defined the presence of a classical EGFR mutation. And he chose to enter a clinical trial that randomized patients to erlotinib or the combination of erlotinib and bevacizumab. He was randomized to the erlotinib arm and was treated with erlotinib. This was complicated by side effects of diarrhea and rash. Uh, the diarrhea was fairly easily controlled with Imodium, although it did have a small but real effect on his quality of life. The rash really bothered him because he lectured a lot. He had a very public presence and wearing his cancer bothered him. This was treated with minocycline and topical steroids um, with real efficacy but not complete resolution. He received erlotinib for about 10 months at which point his cancer was progressing asymptomatically on CAT scan. We felt at that time that the pace of progression was slow um, and he was completely asymptomatic and so we elected to, get, to continue erlotinib and repeat scans three months later. This was done and three months later the cancer was growing more rapidly um, and one of the spots was fairly central in a location that made me fear that if we allowed it to keep growing that he would get into trouble. We considered the approach of radiation to the spots of progression, followed by reinitiation of his erlotinib. We actually have a clinical trial that does exactly that. Um, but it was felt that not all of his lesions were amenable to stereotactic radiosurgery. Um, and as well, uh, there were uh, a number of them. I believe there were five of them, remembering correctly. And we decided that that wasn't the right way to go for him. So he, uh, this patient had repeat molecular testing. I'll start with what we were looking for. We were looking for T790M. Um, there is an FDA-approved third-generation EGFR uh, inhibitor called osimertinib, um, spray name is Tugriso, that is specifically indicated for patients uh, for whom the resistance mechanism to the first-line uh, EGFR TKI is T790M. T790M is common. It's 60% of acquired resistance, so we're not looking for some rare pie-in-the-sky experimental thing here. Um, and so this patient did have uh, repeat testing specifically looking for T790M for the purpose of making him eligible for osimertinib. There is now an FDA approved third generation EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor called osimertinib, brand name Tugriso. This is a drug that is specifically designed to take out not only mutated EGFR, but also T790M mutated EGFR. T790M represents about 60% of acquired resistance to the first-line agents. This agent has been studied extensively, and in most of the studies, the response rate is about two-thirds. And just like with the first-line agents, most of the patients who don't achieve a response do have stable disease. Drug is also very tolerable. It actually has less side effects, particularly less rash and less diarrhea than the first-line uh, agents. So patients feel very, uh, very good on it, um, and it's very effective. So this patient had testing very specifically looking for the presence of T790M with the goal of using this agent. This, patient had a, uh, this patient's case was presented at our multidisciplinary tumor board where his uh, most recent scan was put up on a very large screen and compared to the prior. One of the lesions that was growing uh, was central. Um, after discussion between the surgeon, the interventional pulmonologist, and the interventional radiologist, a decision was made that the safest and most effective way to acquire tissue for the purposes of this testing would be um, through bronchoscopy. That was done and it did show a T790M result and he was treated with osimertinib.